So we're going to move on to some common HMI design mistakes. Um, this mistake is very ignition specific. Before you jump into building, you need to think about the requirements of your project and choose the right visualization module accordingly. The vision module is our classic workhorse. It's what many of our customers use, and it's incredibly powerful. Choose vision when you need um, operating system resources, local file access, serial port access, or custom Java code running directly in the client. However, if you know that your project requires web mobile responsiveness, and this is more and more in demand all the time, you'll need perspective. This was built mobile first for iPads, iPhones, Android devices, um, and can fit on just about any screen. By choosing the wrong designer, you run the risk of building half a project only to realize now you need to rebuild it in a different module. So maybe you're lucky and you've never seen a cluttered or hard to read screen. Um, sometimes that the underlying cause of a cluttered screen is an incorrect container type. It's really tempting for new vision users to use, to use the coordinate container because it's the most familiar but it's not always the best container for your use case and other container types should be considered. We're gonna take a look at some examples for each perspective container type and some other HMI design pitfalls. Our first mistake is not considering mobile, mobile responsive design. So let's look at this example. We have a coordinate container, it fits very nicely on a desktop, but it's not resizable and on a mobile screen it's cut off. Clearly, mobile responsiveness was not considered at design time. The solution is using a mobile responsive designer. The perspective view, this perspective view uses a flex container and it's gonna resize nicely on a desktop or mobile. So let's take a quick look at our perspective container types. First, we have the flex container. Think of this as your go-to container. The flex container is best suited for most mobile responsive screens. It can alter a component's width and height to fill the best available space to accommodate all types of devices and screen sizes. Components can be expanded to fill available free space or they can shrink and wrap to prevent overflow. Next is the coordinate container. Coordinate containers are best for HMI screens or building diagrams when you don't want components to resize and shift positions. You can also use a coordinate container when you want components to overlap. For example, you may want labels on top of a motor display or a spark line censored inside a tank. Component size and location are relative to the parent container size and location. The components can be fixed sized or optionally they can grow and shrink when the, when the view is stretched. Next is the breakpoint container. Use the breakpoint when you want totally different components on a mobile or desktop. There is a single breakpoint and exactly two views, one for small and one for large. The smaller view will be displayed when the screen size is less than the breakpoint. And of course, the larger view will be displayed when the screen size goes over the breakpoint. Now, what if you want the same components on all of your screen sizes, but you want them in different positions with different sizes? So now it's time for the column container. The column container has three breakpoints, small, medium, and large. Each breakpoint has 12 columns and as many rows as you want. On a smaller screen, each component may take up all 12 columns, but each component may have its own row. On a wider display, the components may share a row. Next is the tab container. Use this when you want classic tab strip navigation. This is often useful for a complex device or process. For example, maybe one tab will have set points for a device and the other tabs will have charts or history or real-time status for that device. There is only one component per tab, but this component could be an embedded view, so that would also include other components. Now let's have a look at a cluttered and hard to read screen. Screens are difficult to read if there's too much information. So you should consider grouping your data into tabs or grids. In this example, the components are not aligned. The motors and tanks and valves do not stand out from each other. The font is not consistent. We don't know which highlighted component is important because almost everything is highlighted. 
One trick that goes a long way is to use grids and rulers. Not that everything needs to be rigid and lifeless, but making sure things are lined up correctly and appropriately sized will greatly improve legibility. Now, screens have numbers and words, but remember, you're working with a visual medium. It saves time and improves clarity to convey information visually by using symbols. Here, it's really easy to pick out what is a motor, tank, and valve component. Your goal is to have a common look and feel that extends to your entire project with consistent headers, fonts, button designs. This can be accomplished through the use of styles and themes. To once again hit on that point of, of repeatability, styles and themes allow you to create a custom look for views and components, which can then be reused as you design more screens. So Mara, what is the advantage of using style classes versus the inline styles that you would select directly on a component? Good question. Say you decide that you wanna update all of the links to have a different color when you hover over them. Rather than having to search for each instance of a link, if you have them all assigned to a style class, updating the class will automatically update each one. It's a huge time saver and it ensures that your, your project has that consistent look and feel. Awesome, thank you. So when a user first sees a screen, the last thing they want is to be looking around, searching for important information. So if you're using color, size, position, isolation, and contrast, you can emphasize what's important quickly, alleviating any confusion. In this example, only the faulted pump is highlighted, and this immediately draws your eye. Another solution for hard to read screens is the high performance HMI. Here's a comparison of a traditional HMI versus a high performance HMI. The goal is to help the viewer make the best decision in the shortest amount of time after interacting with the HMI. This design typically uses grayscale colors rather than, rather than the traditional graphics and bright colors for their displays. The critical states should stand out. A similar mistake to hard to read screens is the hard to use screen. What good is a beautiful HMI if you can't use it properly? Probably the most important thing to keep in mind is that you can make actions more efficient by picking the best component for the task at hand. Ignition has a massive component library and each one has its own functions and features. If you're having trouble accomplishing something, the solution might be as simple as choosing a different component. And if you can't find the exact component you need, be sure to check the Ignition Exchange. The Exchange is a platform to share and discover free Ignition resources developed by members of the Ignition community, as well as the inductive automation team. There's a lot of great stuff on there from a configurable dashboard to a froggy game that teaches you how to use Flux containers. It's consistently updated and everything available on the Exchange has been tested and approved by our engineers. Here's another tip for making screens easier to use. Establish a consistent hierarchy within and between views. So this is gonna start with, with choosing a navigation strategy. Ignition allows you to, to, um, to display consistent docked menus on every screen. This way your users know that no matter where they are in the system, they're always gonna see the same menus. You can choose the menus docked on the side of the screen or at the top, of or, at the top or the bottom, and you can use any combination of these menus. By using the shared settings, the same menu will appear in the same position on every screen. So here's a screenshot from our demo project. We have a menu tree and it's docked on the left side of every screen. Now these menu tree items can have as many sub items as you like. So you can categorize your, your navigation. Um, but remember just avoid nesting sub items too deeply because you wanna avoid having excessive clicks. Now let's move on from menu navigation and talk about buttons or navigation on views. Users will interact with the HMI primarily by clicking. So make it clear what is clickable. Avoid custom buttons that don't look like buttons or clickable components. In this example, we have a clickable label for batch history in the lower right corner, but it's not very obvious that you might wanna click that label. 
Here are two better examples of showing the user where to click. In the first example, batch history is highlighted and underlined like a clickable agent, like a classic agent HTML link. In the second example, the batch history is obviously a clickable button and consistent with the stop button. Now, even if all your buttons and labels are looking distinct and obviously clickable, something else to keep in mind is separating your categories from utilities. So say you have a row of identical tabs at the top of a view. You don't want one that's gonna say activate a sidebar right next to one that logs you out of the system. You also wanna avoid making users click too much. Constantly drilling down into menus wastes time, creates confusion, and increases the chance of errors. Ultimately, HMI design boils down to quickly and correctly connecting people to the content they're looking for. For our last HMI design mistake, we're gonna take a look at incorrect bindings. This ties back in with the previous topic of data collection and tag allocation. Recognizing when to use direct versus indirect bindings improves data collection efficiency and helps to create a more dynamic system. So how do you know when to use indirect binding? Well, whenever you find yourself tempted to copy paste a component and then change your direct bindings, that's time to consider an indirect binding. And again, back to the theme of reusability, similar to the UDTs that we talked about earlier, understand when to use templates and embedded views. You've already put in the work of designing views and components. Why build them again? If you find yourself tempted to copy and paste a group of components, consider creating a reusable view or template. Keep in mind though, one thing to avoid when embedding views is deeply nesting. Be sure to stick to only a few levels of embedded views. You also need to know when to use parameters and transforms instead of bindings to further increase functionality. In this example, there are five instances of the blend tank view on a flex repeater. Each view has a device number parameter. The same components are on each view, but they're linked to a different device. We could have manually added each instance to the flex repeater, but it's often faster to use a transform. Linking a transform to a source such as a query will allow your content to be dynamic. In this example, we used a loop to add five instances. Now, a list of views could have been generated from a database query containing equipment information. Then if a newer equipment was added, it would appear on the screen automatically. All right, well, thank you, Mara. And so we had a lot of good information for you guys there on HMI design. And so we're gonna finish off this section with a recap as well. Some common mistakes are choosing the wrong visualization module you know, choosing between vision or perspective, having cluttered or hard to read screens. And so make sure you're thinking about that at the beginning before you start building your project. And you also need to choose the right container type. You can use symbols, grids and rulers, emphasize important, emphasize important information with color, position, size, isolation, contrast, and incorporate a high performance HMI philosophy. Also, um, some more common HMI design mistakes are hard to use screens and incorrect bindings. Uh, the fix for these mistakes are choosing the best component type, maintaining a consistent hierarchy, a common look and feel, and using styles and themes. And remember to think in terms of clicks. Uh, consider affordance, separating categories from utilities uh, and to avoid uh, too many clicks there. Uh, for bindings, think about whether you need direct or indirect, use parameters and transforms when you can, as well as templates and embedded views.